This is Dr. Shweta Aratya. Welcome to the Limitless Brain Lab channel. And we have been so grateful for your kind support for sharing multiple of our videos and caring for us by hitting the subscribe and like button. We will be keeping on bringing these kind of contents which will change life. The mission at the lab personally for me is let's have a great brain health, wealth and great relationships. We all are the same in this journey. Now, we have been talking about the power of mantras. A lot of you have been writing to me about different types of mantras and all the different effects on the brain. Yes, we have been studying the Navkar Mantra also. We have been studying the Nirvana Shatakam. We have been studying the Mahamrutyan Jai Japa. And we have also been studying the Gayatri Mantra. In fact, this is the mantra which I got exposed to in, in, the, in, in a very, 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 very early childhood, which was when I was in the womb of my mother. Some of you would have seen certain reels that Om Burbhuva Swaha, the Gayatri Mantra was passively being chanted when my mom was working as a lab director in a, a state in Gujarat. Now, my mom was a complete uh, scientific person, a total atheist, would not believe in any of it. But since she was working with Arya Samaj and there were a lot of people who were chanting Gayatri Mantra and also passively the entire day a cassette would run, she got exposed to all the nine months having to listen to it compulsorily. In that process, I also somehow got to listen to that. Now, we do say Garbha Sanskar is very powerful. Conceptionally, the fetus and in the womb has a lot of sensory experiences which are open. You think the fetus does not understand the mother's words? Wrong. Science has proved that whatever the mother is thinking, mother is feeling, mother is speaking, the child in the womb is also responding. The toxic environment, the smoking which is happening, all the things around are also influencing the baby inside with the rapid growth of development of the brain which is happening anything which is sort of spoken to it becomes like a wired circuit and hence garbha sanskar or the conception should be taken very very seriously so coming back to the gayatri mantra I used to be a late speaker. Now, by the age of two, two and a half, three, children speak and I wouldn't just speak. And my parents got a little worried. Uh, my dad's a doctor and my mom also into the scientific field and says, hey, why the baby is not speaking? And since I was not talking, they led me to show to pediatrician. They led me to show to a lot of doctors. I would just not speak. Now, the real reason was because I was not exposed to a lot of people talking. In my family, my parents would go out and work. There was just used to be a maid and that's it, you know, and maid was also not very expressive. The moment they put me to my grandparents' place, suddenly I started to talk. And to the surprise of everyone, while I was not even well versed with the vocabulary, I was speaking the Gayatri Mantra. So sort of, you know, Gayatri Mantra had been laid down while I was way back in the the conception with the my mother's womb now Gayatri Mantra for me remained very, very, very special. Of course, over the period of time, life catches on and you forget it. But again, a point in time came in where suddenly, out of nowhere, when I get got started to get into trouble, a mantra pops up in the brain. Now, when I started to chant Gayatri Mantra very, very seriously, first of all, mantra has potential power. You have to speak it out initially because then you are listening. There is a frequency which is generated. All these mantras, remember, are power capsules. They are packets of frequencies which is influencing your body, your mind, your entire Panchakosh or all the five layers that you and me are built with. Now, mantras cannot be taken lightly. Mantras have to be respected. Some of you continuously ask these are Vedic chants and certain uh, special chants. Can they be done in the menstrual cycle? Can they be done by women, men? See, scientific perspective of this is it is a frequency and frequencies do play a significant role when it comes to changing the physiology of the mind, body and the brain. And hence, if there are certain special don'ts, do follow it. But largely, there is no harm, particularly of chanting a Gayatri Mantra. It really does not matter scientifically whether you chant in the morning or you chant in the evening. But very important to consistently do it. What we have seen is three fundamental things in our small trial. We are about to publish this trial because I was myself completely taken aback when we saw this. Now, we have a limitless brain lab where we do all the experiments. We bring in people, we have EEGs, we have ERPs, we have autonomic nervous system, we have different other measurement parameters, lots of questionnaires by which we understand a pre 
and a post. So when Gayatri Mantra was taken as a part of the exercise as to see what is happening in the brain and body, something fascinating happened. Hang tight until the end, until we disclose what was happening. But even in the literature, a lot of things have been suggested. Particularly, Gayatri Mantra has been studied in people who are students. There is a very beautiful meta-analysis and a critical review where all the benefits of Gayatri Mantra has been very well explained. It activates the vagus nerve. It balances the left and the right side of the brain. It has the power to create the alpha and the theta, which can be very, very robust, which means you can have good relaxation, concentration, and focus. It has also been shown that students who practice Gayatri Mantra before had a lot of focus, attention, and concentration in their exams. The entire Gayatri Mantra has also been studied in a few diseases, particularly some of them with anxiety, depression, and the meta-analysis and the critical review of the literature has found significant statistical benefit in people who chant regularly and how Gayatri Mantra influences this. Now, what did we see in the lab? Now, the other question which a lot of people pose is, should we be chanting in the mind? Should it be chanted out loud? Now, well, initially, as you begin with your journey, please do chant it loud. Please do try and make sure that intonations are correct. Try to learn a little bit of Sanskrit. You can do a transliteration. If you don't know Sanskrit, try your level best. Try listening to it a few times because when you listen to it, your brain also gets that melody and intonation. Now, as we know, Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dimahi Diyo Naha Prachodayat. You all of you know the meaning of it. We are going to post the meaning of it. It's a super powerful deity and Devi that we are uh, respecting, that we are bowing down to, the Gayatri, we are trying to say that, you know, get my intellect so powerful, so sharp, so that I can serve the humanity the best. At least for me, that is what Gayatri Devi has done. So as a sadhak, for a very, very long time of Gayatri, uh, hav Gayatri mantras, we also used to do Gayatri havans. Now remember that havan is not any fire. It is a sacred fire. When you put the mantra and the havana, the fire's combination, you're invoking the Lord inside. That becomes literally very potent like an atomic energy. Now, even, even for that matter, Tesla or even for that matter, Einstein, they were all fans of frequencies because when a frequency shift happens, changes physiologically can be seen. So when we studied Gayatri Mantra and we did a very simple pre-analysis and baseline to study the blood pressure, pulse, the physiology, the state of mind and some medic questionnaires which are standardized questionnaires used in such kind of protocols and then we played the Gayatri Mantra every day for seven minutes and why did we choose seven minutes so that the person gets into the groove of it if you want to hear more please do so by any means this was an experiment and every day as we continued to do it for 90 days we started to measure what are the changes now I always do these experiments with my brain as the first brain there is something called the alpha peak in the brain. When I'm closing my eyes, I generate a posterior alpha. And that alpha has a certain peak. And that peak is extremely important for cognition, for reasoning, for understanding, for solving a problem. So anywhere between 8 and 12 hertz is alpha's peak. And so you can get it between 9, 10. A lot of great thinkers, a lot of people who can process more information are on the higher spectrum of high alpha, 12 or 13. Very few times, very less times we do see that, but we do see it. So I was also somewhere 10 and then as the experiments continued, it hit up to 13. There was a significant change which was seen. And then we called five more volunteers to do this pilot and exactly the same thing was re, uh, exactly the same thing was shown again. Now, once this happens, what are the other changes? There is also a balance between the alpha in the frontal cortex, what is happening. Generally, you feel much lighter, much calmer, as well as sharp. Over the period of time, there was also building of the great or the super brain wave called gamma. And gamma was being built in these frontal cortex. Frontal cortex, as we have always seen, is a seat of 
preparedness of exactly what needs to be done emotional regulation of getting your thoughts under control and as we proceed with the experiment all of this was found in a great scientific and statistically significant way do you want to manifest a dream life a dream car amazing relationship do you want to manifest your profession where you are at the top well people say manifestation is manipulation manifestation is not possible believe me from the point of view of neuroscience it is just reframing the mindset from the poverty mindset to the abundance mindset there are steps to it there is a way in which you can do that and this particular neuroscience manifestation course is one of the popular courses which we are doing right now and i will bring you some fascinating facts and if you do practice consistently over a period of time i guarantee manifestation is not just possible it is very easily doable so join me on this course of the neuro manifestation module where i meet all of you and together we live a beautiful amazing happy and abundant life So if you are also looking to participate in any such volunteering studies with the Limitless Brain Lab do write to us and I will be more than happy to enroll you in these kind of studies so when the Gayatri mantra is chanted very religiously every single day for 90 days you will see the difference in terms of the outcome the behavior your cognition your learning abilities your reading abilities a lot of you have written to me how to do fast reading Sometimes I can easily read two books in a day or three books in a day it's all because when you develop those cognitive capabilities it is very easy it can be done super fast now if you are suffering from any of anxiety depression etc as well please do read these meta analysis because there has been a significant change which has been shown as well so every single practice that is there in the ancient wisdom is extremely powerful and we should be thankful to our great 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 rishis who have given us this beautiful parampara and the sanatan dharma to have such influence on our brain and the mind so keep watching the channel uh, with us here at the limitless brain lab i'm dr shweta aratya and thank you very much for each of your comments like share we do love you each of you we want health and wealth for every single individual on this planet earth thank you so much